Hola mis amores, this is Kirby Marie here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome. Today we're celebrating 500 subscribers on YouTube. This is absolutely crazy. I cannot believe that we just got in here. Uh, first off, I wanted to apologize because uh, I haven't done this video uh, when I was supposed to when I got to 500, but I've been so busy, busy a little bit uh, as of late that um you know haven't had the time but today i finally had the time had to wait for the entire morning and afternoon uh because it was raining and so you know will be a lot of rain noises whatsoever anyways uh today as a celebration of a special milestone today we're gonna be doing another q a section and i already got some questions from some of you guys Thank you. If you want to participate in the next Q&A, uh, you can follow me on my social medias, which I'll be putting on the link in the description, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I also have Discord, and you can check me out there. And you can, Or you can, I don't know, submit a question right here in the comments, and I'll just do it for the next video. Alright, so we're just going to get started with the questions and see what you guys have for me today. <laughs> Alright, the first question is from Mango. Hi, Mango! <laughs> Do you think the future of games will be great? Absolutely, especially in 2022 with so many great upcoming games like God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, the Kalista Protocol, many many more games. I definitely see more improvement in video games and how f um, very more creative the developers have become and how uh, fantastic uh, the new entries keep coming in and I'm very excited for the future of uh, video games in general if you were to get rid of one console which one will it be Xbox <laughs> next is from Nyx Galaxy <laughs> when did you get married pretty basic question uh, I got married on December 19 2020 next month will be our year of anniversary of marriage <laughs> and it's been uh, uh, one of the best things that has ever happened I love my husband so much I appreciate him what's your husband's name John <laughs> his name is John and how old is he well he is almost 26 years old next one is from punk shroom have you thought of streaming on YouTube instead of twitch it's not that I haven't thought about it it's that I already have done streaming on YouTube before and it hasn't been a very a pleasant experience and so I was just pre-recorded live streaming until obviously I got into Twitch and Twitch is a much more better platform in my opinion in terms of streaming at least than with YouTube. I sometimes uh, do pre-recorded live streams on YouTube for those that don't have Twitch or just don't want to have anything to do with Twitch. But yeah, uh, I have thought about it and no, I just don't like the idea of actually doing live uh, streams on YouTube and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone uh, unless it's pre-recorded and that's about it. How do you stay motivated with streaming and making videos? I guess you guys are the motivation pretty much. Obviously, if nobody would ever like encourage me, encourage me. That's the word I'm looking for. Like if I wasn't encouraged to do any of this or whatsoever, then I probably wouldn't have the motivation for anything and be like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> but because of you guys who just are so kind and generous and care about my content, uh, whatsoever then yeah you guys are the reason why I keep going next question is from Anthony how has your how has the life of a streamer and youtuber been going for you well as a life on YouTube as you can see we made it to 500 which is incredible it's going great uh, I have so much fun making videos I'm not like making videos all the time because I'm busy but uh, whenever I get the chance it's always such a joy to do so and the life of a, of a streamer it's a little weird I'm still getting used to it especially when I spend three weeks without streaming on Twitch wow. <laughs> it, it, it's just a, a, a weird uh, sometimes there's some uh, ups and sometimes there's its downs but overall I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun on Twitch and it's been a really nice ride <laughs> Which are your favorite horror games? My favorite horror game pretty much is Resident Evil 4 It will always remain to be my favorite horror game and I hope that Capcom when they do Resident Evil 4 remake uh, 
you know, they do it with that same uh, horror and atmospheric style that Resident Evil 4 have, but with your, you know, with a newer version. So yeah, I'm very excited for that one. Which is your least favorite horror game? Uh, I think my least favorite. I don't have like a horror game that I hate so much. I think, but one that really disappointed me that I played was The Medium. Which I'll be posting later on on my channel. I played that uh, and it disappointed me very much so. It's a game that I probably will never come back to play it again and I will probably forget it. Uh, I, it had so much potential to be a very great psychological Silent Hill inspired horror game but it just didn't live up the, the hype that it had. And yeah, I mean if you like horror games I would definitely recommend you to play it but uh, if not, then, you know, it's not worth your time. The Bearded Nerd, what, what inspired you to be a YouTuber? Pretty much, that's the basic answer I could give you about that is that pretty much seeing other YouTubers playing video games and not just playing video games, but getting to meet uh, new people, do helping others, uh, whether it's a charity or supporting others. Uh, it's pretty much what inspired me uh, to do YouTube. I don't know if that's the answer you wanted, but that's the answer I can give you. <laughs> Patty Player has asked, How you managed to get many subscribers from YouTube? Well, pretty much simply by meeting new content creators, whether it's on Twitch, whether it's on YouTube, from social media. So I share my content with them, and if they like it, they share it with other people as well. Sharing it around social media helps you gain subs too. Uh, as long as you know how to properly do it with the hashtags and whatsoever. I, I think the best social media where you could probably get more followers, maybe more subscribers, sorry, is on Twitter. Twitter has been one of the bigger helps uh, uh, out of all the other social medias. But us also friends as well could recommend your channel and... Uh, help you out a lot. Who Bromical and he has asked how much have you improved during your time as a youtuber? A lot uh, basically when I started my YouTube channel uh, I didn't even have a face cam. My mic was way too low and I was doing all of this while filming with Sheriff Play on the PlayStation 4. Brilliant, right? Then by the time uh, it was that uh, I had a camera but then there was too many background noise uh, and it was annoying some people uh, but then it improved finally got a much better setup as you can see here uh, a better camera and a better mic <laughs> and, and I have OBS that has been such a wonderful help both on streaming or when I'm recording regular videos and when the show film Laura is also an incredible editing video video editor that has helped me out a lot and being able to do these uh, crazy ass sound effects or crazy effects or, or funny moments that I've had in my gameplays. Which do you enjoy doing more? Editing videos or making thumbnails? Editing videos, that's super obvious because when you're making thumbnails is super easy, especially with how I'm doing them now. Editing videos is much more fun because when you're like re-watching your recorded video and then you think of something hilarious at the moment that you want to add and then just put it there, it, it just it's just so perfect and so hilarious and so fun. Of all the games you played this year, which one has been your favorite so far? Oh, that's a very simple answer uh, to give. Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is a game, it's not a horror game, and I'm normally more of a, a person who likes to play horror games most of, the, most of the time. And if I play some other game that isn't like horror game, it's not like I care much. But Ghost of Tsushima has definitely had a different impact on me. Uh, with the story, with its gameplay, with, with how much the developers have poured their heart, souls, and passions into that game. Uh, how I feel related with some of the characters there. It's just so well done, in my opinion. And again, it made, and it, like, it's one of those games that has made me cry much more than any other games. Like, normally when a game makes me cry, I cry at least once, but this game made me cry like at least two to three times or more. I think it's just so worth the experience. I definitely would recommend you guys to play that game. It is so well done. What do you do it for your YouTube channel? What do you play outside of the channel in your spare time? Or, or if you're not a YouTuber and you just want to play games, you just play it. 
uh, or or watch someone play it. It's really good. It's really worth your time, and I highly recommend it. It's just an incredible game and one that will stick into my heart forever. Okay, next question from Shaquana. What is your all-time favorite game? Oh, I already did that answer earlier, but I'll answer it here. Resident Evil 4. <laughs> next question from Manta Games. How did you get into voice acting? I wanted to get to voice acting way before, uh, but I was just more like at first looking around the internet like advices. Especially from YouTuber Rizzy Voices, who is a voice actress herself. I would watch other voice actors as well, talk about their experiences whatsoever before jumping in. And it wasn't until in late 2020 that I decided to get into voice acting uh, on internet first, pretty much. Now I got to book at least uh, four projects. I'm currently working on one, and there's another special project that I'm working, a fandom which I'm also voicing in it. But the other projects I've been casted, but they have not given an update or anything so far. But they're still in casting process whatsoever. Next question is from Breeson. How is it like to be married? It's pretty good. It's different when you're when you're just the two of you and different when you have kids or when you have a lot going on whatsoever. But right now, as just the two of us and our dog and our cat in, in this life, it's been pretty great. We always take the time for each other whenever we can, obviously. And we play video games together or we do stuff together. And, you know, just have a chill time. And it's been pretty nice and happy. I don't expect like a magic fairy tale like Disney or whatever. But, you know, as long as I'm with the person that I love, then, you know, it's that's all I want. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show? Yeah, I don't watch a lot of TV shows. I'm, I'm really weird. I used to watch a lot of Disney shows back in the day. I guess my favorite one could be Good Luck Charlie, but um, I rarely watch movies and TV series, so don't ask me questions about that. And don't ask me much why. <laughs> I know it's weird, but that's just how I am. I just don't watch series much or, or movies. I, I just, I can't stand still when it comes to movies or, or TV shows. I, I literally cannot. Next question is from Kevin Gamey. How do you overcome depression? Oh, deep question. <laughs> I would say one of the things you can do pretty much in to overcome depression would be meditation. Or if you're a religious person, then praying. Spending time with positive people around your life is a good way to not be depressed. And it's not good to be spending time with a lot of negative people. Uh, so yeah, spend time with positive people. So just being thankful for small comforts or being thankful for the people in your life and how helpful they have been. Being thankful for everything you have in your life by doing stuff that you love uh, without having anyone to stop you to tell you that you can't do something that you like because it's not something that they like. As long as you do what you love, then you're, you'll be happy with that. Listening to music helps in a way. As long as you're not listening to a very sad, depressive music, you know, music that can uh, help you feel relaxed or make you dance or whatsoever, that that sort of thing helps me. So obviously, if you wanna, if you wanna overcome depression, you can seek therapy as well. It's nothing wrong with uh, seeking therapy and getting help when, if no, if you don't have any other help for you. Yeah, that's about it, what I can say. I, I don't know, I hope I did everything uh, I can't do answer that question. It's a really, very deep and tough question, but uh, thank you for asking it anyways, Kevin. Next question is from Azur Ali. Ali! <laughs> what are the three games that made you cry? What are the three games? I pro You probably should have asked what are the games that made you cry because I cried in more than one game. Uh, I, I Like I said earlier, I cried in Ghost of Tsushima like a couple of times beautiful game i still love it and appreciate it uh, silent hill the finale silent hill 2 made me cry uh as well in a weird way it takes two also made me cry in the <laughs> uh, detroit become human did make me cry too and for some reason assassin's creed 4 black flag uh, also made me cry in a particular death scene of a very important character it made me cry i'm just a very emotional person Oh, I also cry on mobile games like the Freshman uh, and the finales with 
Uh, the whole Professor Vasquez cancer and everything that <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm I'm a very very emotional uh, person. What was the hardest boss you had done in the game? I died 40 times with that bastard. 40 times, like that's embarrassing. <laughs> what are your top three favorite storyline games? I would say Ghost of Tsushima, Detroit Become Human. I could probably say Final Fantasy VII as well, the, especially the remake. It's such a very great story and I had a lot of fun with that too. Next question is from Scared for Science. As an aspiring voice actor, is there a specific character you would one day love to voice act? Definitely, uh, Claire Redfield from Resident Evil 2. She's been one of my favorite Resident Evil characters since I was a child. And literally, Resident Evil 2 is like the first horror game I played. So, uh, uh, playing as Claire, uh, you know, I admire her so much ever since then. And I would love to voice her as well. I would also like to be in any Final Fantasy game, whether if I'm a major or a minor character, but it's just Final Fantasy games are so cool as well. <laughs> Being horror games, voice acting for horror games. That's the thing, I only want to do voice acting for video games. I'm not looking for voice acting for anything else in video games. I, I And I would love to be to voice a character for those Dark Pictures Anthologies games as well one day. So yeah, that would be cool. It's from Rini. Rini. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Is there any tips for doing voice acting and how do you uh, lower your voice during? Like, I don't know if you meant by during recording or when you're like editing the video because if it's editing I can explain but like if it's like during the during the recording in that moment I wouldn't know much probably just lowering your voice I'm gonna talk slowly and lower it, whatever I don't know <laughs> but uh, yeah if it's like lowering your voice and edit video editing it is easier I use one to share Filmora where you can like toggle with the mouse and you can uh, separate the audio from from whatever you're recording as well and you can make some changes uh, other than lowering the volume you can add echo voices and everything like that it's a very very useful app if you ever want to check out Wondershare Filmora it really helps out a lot now in terms of tips for doing voice acting gosh I can't prepare voice acting is pretty much acting like, it isn't just about making silly voices like I sometimes do with voice impressions or have a nice sounding voice. Uh, you know, it's it's all about how you can believably act. You know, you have to not just make a silly voice, but you have to also act like it. Like, adding emotions whatsoever. But, and if you ever feel like you need to improve on that, you can sign up for acting classes or improv classes. I think you can check out on social media whatsoever. I don't know much about those. Another thing is that it's important to have a good home studio. And not like a perfect one, but a well taken care one uh, kind of studio. <laughs> one that will help you, especially with eliminating background noises. Because a lot of the uh, directors for certain projects always demands you not have any background noise. We don't want to hear cars passing by. We don't want to hear an air sound. We don't want to uh, hear the lawnmower or anything like that. We don't want to hear anything. We just want to hear your voice. And so home studios help you out with that too. Also by getting a good mic and good other equipment help you out as well. Uh, but you also need to like uh, improve, especially when some people do mouth noises like you know, it's annoying and you don't want that. Uh, so, well, some directors wouldn't want that. So you have to also improve, improvise on that. Like if you're a new voice actor and you're like the mentality you have is to do bigger projects immediately, then that's not going to happen. If you want to do uh, bigger jobs with bigger pays, you got to do smaller jobs that might or might not pay you. But to get to those projects, you also have to do voice acting for free! <laughs> and if you hate the idea of voice acting for free as a beginner, then yeah. This is definitely not for you. Uh, because number one, you need to see this as 
something fun like a hobby something you have fun and enjoy making like bringing a character to life being a different kind of character when you're voicing it, yeah you have to have that mentality and also number two it helps you practice and get experience for bigger projects so it's definitely recommendable to start uh, working on free projects if you want to do any sort of bigger projects uh, to get experienced in that sort of sense. There are fan dubs like the one I'm doing with the crown and the flame. There are uh, small indie games for free. You can also do audiobooks, commercials. You can also participate in YouTube videos from other content creators who are looking for, you know, voice actors as well. Or you can pretty much create uh, your own projects like I did with the crown and the flame fan dub. You can create fan dubs or you can create a completely new project of yours if it's a fan dub as long as you're giving recognition to the person who originally made the project then you're good for it but if you don't then yeah that's a problem so you always have to uh, give credit to the person who originally made this uh, you can do fan dubs like i did once with christina where uh, there's an existing game final fantasy 14 if i'm not mistaken we did a short little fan dub where i voiced lightning and christina voiced uh, I don't remember the girl's name, but it was the sister of lightning. <laughs> uh, Sarah, I think it was. Uh, we did a little short. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. You can do like short videos like that. And having a YouTube channel as well helps out a lot. I've, you know, done voice impressions and it's more me practicing. I also play uh, the game of choices, which helps me uh a lot and practicing and voice acting and doing other types of voices anyways back to the point uh yeah you need to get practice be experienced uh you know and eventually those type of things will help you create your demo don't do the demo yourself demos can help you get agents um, and then these agents can uh help you get very bigger projects uh, that you know are sometimes very hard to find and a lot of the big projects are mostly in Los Angeles pretty much so yeah basically if you want to work on bigger projects you pretty much practically have to live in Los Angeles if you want to get into the bigger projects but you can also uh, check out Texas they do anime especially from Crunchyroll I don't know if Crunchyroll I think Crunchyroll was recently bought by a different company but I'm not sure if they still work there in Texas you have to look for that information yourself websites that I, you know can i can recommend you to check out for voice acting pretty much casting call club that's where i did uh my project for the fandom the crown of the flame uh you can audition for other projects there some of them are free some of them are paid uh you can also check out voices one two three uh, you can check out voices.com it's there's two separate sites by the way two different sites uh, you can also check out on Twitter. What was the name of the site? <laughs> you can check out on Twitter on a particular page that I like to check out a lot called VA Casting Call RT. Uh, I found some very interesting projects there. Right now, they are looking. Right now, the most recent one that I can find is that they are looking for uh, uh, auditions. F uh, for a game is it a game yes they're looking for auditions right now in this website on twitter they're looking for uh to cast a, a female character a female alien on a game called arles the wanderer they are submitting auditions until the 15th of november just to tell you right now and so yeah you can check it out and they leave information on the auditioning process you can check it out. I'll, I'll put all those links in the description. You can also check out itch.io. Itch I recently discovered that they have done uh, casting calls as well. Uh, I have not auditioned for any of those projects, but you can check out there as well. And also, you can check out uh, the YouTube channel Breezy Voices. I'm going to leave her link in the description too. Also, there's a website from D. Bradley Baker, a very famous voice actor, incredibly and talented person who has a website with very uh, incredible advices for new beginners in voice acting as well, which I will leave a link in the description too. Anyways, that's pretty much it for all the Q&As of today. Thank you all who participated in this Q&A. 
If you didn't participate in this Q&A and wish to participate in the next one, you can check out my social medias on the comments. You can also uh, pretty much leave your comment uh, of, the, of the question in this video if you like for the next occasion. And yeah, thank you guys so much. It's been such an incredible journey. 500 subs. I thank you all so much for the love and the support. And let's keep the family growing. And I'll be seeing you on the next new video. Goodbye.